Good evening. It's good to have all of you here with us uh, at this Christmas Eve service. Uh, it's a great time to be together to worship and celebrate the birth of Christ. We're going to, uh, just a couple of instructions for you. If there are uh, children here um, this evening, what we say on Christmas Eve is that this is as much for the kids as it is for anybody else. And if they want to come up and look at things, let them come up. You don't need to restrain them. If they want to come look at the musicians at a little bit closer pace, that's fine. Or the Christmas tree or the flowers or anything like that, um, that's perfectly all right. Uh, let, them, let them come on up and uh, it'll, be, it'll be fine. We love to have children here with us and uh, we want them to feel like they're a part of the service. We're going to begin our service this evening with uh, some special music. Um, we have uh, a great opportunity with a string quartet and uh, our musicians, uh, part of the church. And so we're going to have uh, several numbers here at the beginning just to get us into the mood of Christmas and listen together uh, to the music that they are going to share with us tonight. So I just invite you to uh, enjoy this music as we prepare for our time of worship.
Please stand as you are able for our call to worship. I have good news for you. Your Savior has been born, Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to all God's people on earth. Please continue standing for our opening carols.
Please be seated. Tonight, we reflect the four Advent candles and remember what they represent. Peace, hope, love, love. and joy. We light the Christ candle in the center of the wreath to celebrate the birth of that most precious boy. For unto us a child is born, unto us a Savior is given, and he will be our ruler. We light this candle because Christ is the center of our lives. Please join me in our Christmas prayer. Holy God, thank you that the time of waiting and preparing is over and that the light of Christ shines so very clearly tonight. May our joy be full and our hearts rejoice, for the world shall never be the same again. Peace hope, love, and joy have come to free all from the bondage of sin. Thank you, God, for this holy night. Amen.
If there are children are here who would like to have uh, them come forward at this time, have a special message especially for them. Come on down. I won't hurt you. <laughs> Hey guys, what are you doing? Looking good. All right. So, I know you probably already know this, but what's the, what, what is Christmas about? What are we doing at Christmas time? Celebrating Jesus' birth. That's exactly right. And so it's kind of like a, a birthday party for Jesus, isn't it? Yeah. Well, um, I've got, can you, get, can you get where you can see, can you see the screen from there? I've got a little video that I want to show and um, about a Christmas party for Jesus. Can we, can we show that? That's oh, Jesus. hey Steve, how's it going? Good, Jesus, how you doing? Good. You ready for your birthday party? I am, let's go. Hmm, you're not wearing that. Yeah, I am. That. This. Uh, let's at least get you a coat or something. Put this on you here. And, uh, but if you can put your arms through it, help me out here a little. There we go. There you go. Yep. Kind of spruce the place up a little bit. If you could just kind of hang on to this and take that. You should probably take some kind of door prizes or something. Yes. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. How lovely are thy. Branches. Do you have any uh, refreshments you could bring, or uh, salt and vinegar? I, I, I don't know. I guess we can take them. We'll see. Ginger ale. Uh, we can make some punch when we get there. No, I know, I know, I know. We're we're, we're trying. No, uh, it'll probably be about another 15 minutes. I'm trying to get everything ready here. No, <laughs> just seeing what he was wearing. Probably gonna need a few bows as well. There. And I did get you a little present. It is just not Christmas without some lights. You really need some lights. Big, beautiful, pretty lights to... Steven, come on, man. We're gonna be late for Jesus' party. Uh, we're ready. Well, where's Jesus? Sometimes we get so carried away with all the stuff at, at Christmas time, we forget about Jesus. All those other things are fun and they're good to do and there's nothing wrong with them, but we don't want to use them to cover up what Je you know, the, the real reason for Christmas and that's celebrating Jesus' birth. So um, let's remember that as we celebrate tonight and tomorrow that uh, it is Jesus' birth that we want to remember. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we thank you that you sent Jesus into this world. Help us to uh, celebrate and offer our best to him. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. A reading from the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah invite you to stand in honor of the reading of the scripture this evening. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled out shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. 
He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of the scriptures today. May you be seated. As we think about uh, this scripture tonight, I would invite you, if you'd like, you can turn a page in your program and you'll find uh, an outline of the sermon. And you're welcome to use that if you want to follow along or if there's space there, if you want to jot down anything you want to remember. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, on this wonderful night, we gather together to know and remember your birth among us. May your spirit move within us as well. And may we be open to hearing your message to us. In your name we pray. Amen. From 1959 to 1979, the Christian churches were closed in China by the Chinese government. I read a report not too long ago that told of the Christians in Shanghai during that 20-year period. Even though there were no public services of worship, there continued to exist small cells of disciples who came together sometimes at the risk of their own freedom. One particular church in Shanghai had been turned into a warehouse early in 1959. But on Christmas Eve of that same year, something caused one older couple to leave their tiny apartment and walk through a cold drizzle to the ancient building. It was dark and padlocked. However, as they got closer to the church, they were suddenly aware of other silent walkers. They came from every side street, some alone, some in groups of two or three, all converging on the church square. Soon there were literally hundreds standing shoulder to shoulder in the churchyard. For over two hours, as midnight passed and Christmas Day arrived, they stood in the rain. No hymns, no choirs, no sermon. Only an unspoken communion around that shuttered church. The same observance happened every Christmas in Shanghai for 20 years. There was never any public announcement. It just seemed that every Christmas Eve, those people would come together and for hours stand silently in their communion and their common devotion to Christ and their common love for one another. Fortunately for us, our congregation is very much open and in business, as are all Christian churches throughout this nation. Nevertheless, though, our gathering today is more akin to that Christmas Eve in Shanghai than we might at first suspect. Like those Chinese Christians in 1959, we have assembled from different neighborhoods for the purpose of spending some time together in worship of the babe of Bethlehem. It is entirely appropriate that this sanctuary be dim, dimmer than usual. For this past year has overshadowed many of our lives with dreariness and despair. Many of us have spent more of 2019 groping in the darkness than we have basking in the light. We have buried persons we loved and sometimes marriages that we wanted to keep. We have been frustrated by our children or other loved ones. Some have lost their jobs and others lost their self-respect. Some find themselves in illness still in search of healing. Even amidst the great joy of this season, the candles around us simply bear witness to all the darkness about us. Our hope and prayer this time of year is found in Phillips Brooks Carol. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. 
Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. We have gathered here tonight because there is something special about this evening. It proclaims that God's light may be surrounded by darkness, but never overcome by it. We have been led by the light to this place at this moment. And our hearts are filled with anticipation that something of great significance to us and to others is about to take place. The great cellist Pablo, Pablo Casals, who lived almost a hundred years from 1876 to 1973, recalls the first time he went to church on Christmas Eve. He was five years old and walked through the chilly night with his father, who was the church organist. Listen to his words. I felt that something wonderful was about to happen. High overhead, the heavens were full of stars. We walked in silence in the narrow, dark streets. There were moving figures, shadowy and spectral and silent too. Then suddenly there was a burst of light flooding from the open doors of the church. We moved into that light silently. Then, just as suddenly, my father broke the silence with music from the organ, and we all sang. And when I sang, it was my heart that was singing, and I poured out everything that was within me. That is what makes this night so holy. There is no greater joy for Christians than feeling the warmth of Christ's light in the presence of the coldness of the world's darkness. If we are willing and able to pour out everything that is within us, we, like Pablo Casals, will feel our hearts strangely warmed by God's light and love. No darkness is ever strong enough to put out the forces of light. And as Christians are led by the light, this year something miraculous begins to happen. Whether it be United Methodists gathering around the chancel at 57th and Warnell, Chinese Christians joining with one another around the churchyard in Shanghai, or shepherds and townsfolk coming together around the stable of Bethlehem, Christ's everlasting light shines just enough to enable each of us to see everyone else in a different way. Christians who come together because they are led by the light are never able to see one another in the same way again. No wonder the shepherds were afraid when news of Christ's birth reached them. When holy light shines throughout the world, people of faith begin to see humans they have never seen before. And the more human beings Christians see, the more human beings Christians are called to love. In spite of how different they felt from one another as they stood around the manger, they sensed that their lives were bound to one another in a fashion that nothing in the world could ever pull them apart again. Just as the Word had become flesh among them, so also each of them would make the Word become flesh through the actions of their lives. That explains what happened to those Chinese Christians in Shanghai and what can occur with each of us tonight. The people next to us on these pews may be relatives or friends or they may be strangers that we've never seen before. But just as the light of this sanctuary allows us to see the contours of their faces, so also the light of Christ's love enables us to identify with their needs. Christians never assemble around the manger for worship without reaffirming the bond they feel with one another. On Christmas Eve, there is always enough light to find 
persons who are lost. And there is always enough compassion to embrace people who are living in need. A hymn by Henry Burton says it so forcefully. He is breaking down the barriers. He is casting up the way. He is calling for his angels to build up the gates of day. But his angels here are human, not the shining hosts above. For the drumbeats of his army are the heartbeats of our love. It's almost Christmas Day, my sisters and brothers. If we allow Christ's light to warm our hearts, then Christ's love will also unite our lives. When this happens, in addition to celebrating Christ's compassion for us, we also celebrate our compassion for one another. An ancient rabbi once asked his pupils how they could tell when the night had ended and the day was on its way back. Could it be, asked one student, when you can see an animal in the distance and tell whether it is a sheep or a dog? No, answered the rabbi. Could it be, said another, when you can look at a tree in a distance and tell whether it is a fig tree or a peach tree? No, said the rabbi. Well then, what is it? The pupils demanded. The wise old teacher responded with words that rest at the very heart of the mystery and meaning of this holy season. He said, It is when you look on the face of any woman or man and see that she or he is your sister or brother. That is when you know the light is coming. Because if you cannot do this, then no matter what time it is, it is still night. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this census was first taken when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary his espoused wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should bring forth her child and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in that same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this night in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there were with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward all. And it came to pass when the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem to see this thing which the Lord hath made known to us. And so they came with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at these things told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. I'm so glad you all came to join me in worship this evening and to sing these wonderful Christmas carols and just have a great time in worship. In just a moment, we're going to receive our offering. But before we do, um, I have a couple of things I would like to ask you to do. There's a card that's in your program that looks like this. And on one side, it says Connection. We hope that you'll take that and you'll put your name on there and any other information you could give us. We'd appreciate that. And uh, then as the offering plate is passed, you can place this into the offering plate. On the other side of that, it says commitment. And here's where we want you to think about what you might do as a result of being in uh, this worship service today. And there's two things that we hope you will consider. One, it says, I will light a candle at home during this season to remind me of God's light coming into the world. 
you're willing to do that, if you'll check that box. And then under that, the second one is, I will seek to see people around me in a new light, remembering that we are all children of God and deserving of love. If you're willing to do that, if you'll check that box. Those same commitments are uh, listed at the bottom of the sermon outline if you want to take that home with you and and remind yourself uh, of what you're committing to. And then under that are some prayer requests. If you have anything that you would like for us to pray over, you can list your prayer requests there. We have a prayer team that will take those. And uh, then on the left-hand side, if you have any questions about Country Club United Methodist Church, if you want to check that, we will be sure to get back with you. So this place this in the offering plate when it is passed. There's one other thing. There's an envelope in your, uh, an extra envelope in your program. It either looks like this or maybe another Christmas uh, picture on it. But if you would like to give to a Christmas offering today, we're going to be splitting our Christmas offering. Half of it will go to what's called Della Lamb, which is an agency here in Kansas City that helps um, with immigrants, with poor, with those who are hungry. And so if you, half of the offering will go to that. The other half will go to Church World Service, um, which helps in spreading God's word all over the world. So if you would like to uh, place an offering in this envelope and then put it in the offering plate, that is where that will go to. We're just so great that you are here with us this evening. If you're visiting with us, we don't expect you to give anything to the church. We're just glad you're here. Hope you'll put your card in the offering plate. And know that the money that we do receive goes for God's mission and work, both here and around the world. Will the ushers please come forward?
Will you join me in our prayer of dedication? Gracious God, you excel at giving good gifts to us. Thank you for loving the world so much that you sent the perfect gift to transform our hearts and lives. At Christmas time, we share a special offering so that we might help others find the gift of the Savior for their lives. Let be, be peace on earth and let it begin as we give of ourselves to care for the needs of others through this Christmas offering. Amen. You may be seated. We join together now in our service of communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest, and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh born of woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given to you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. That we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
as we receive communion tonight, everyone who is here is welcome to receive these elements. You do not have to be a member of this church or a member of any church or any particular age. All are welcome at the Lord's table. We'll be bringing down the bread and cup uh, to the center aisle and you'll receive a piece of the bread, dip it into the cup and take both elements together and then return to your seats by the side aisles. If you need gluten-free, we have some gluten-free bread over here in a cup. Just take a piece of that and dip it into the cup there and you can receive the elements in that way. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
We enter the, into that portion of the candle lighting part of our service. You know, the earliest Christians talked about Christmas as light piercing the darkness. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Christ has come, a Savior has been born to deliver us and give us hope. We need Christmas in the darkest moments of our lives. We're going to celebrate that spreading of the light through the lighting of candles. The acolytes will take a light from the altar candles and come down the center aisle. So the first person close to the aisle, tip your candle in and get a light from their light. And then turn to the person next to you and let them tip their candle to yours. If yours is burning, don't tip it or you'll spill wax all over yourself or somebody else. So hold yours up and let the other person tip into that light. And so after we say our prayer, we're going to dim the sanctuary and spread the light. Will you pray with me? Send, O oh God, into the darkness of this troubled world the light of your Son. Let the star of your hope touch the minds of all people with the bright beams of mercy and truth and so direct our steps that we may ever walk in the way revealed to us as the shepherds of Bethlehem walked with joy to the manger where he dwelled, who now and ever reigns in our hearts, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
As we celebrate, God is with us in the midst of Jesus' birth. Let us continue to live lives of hope, peace, joy, and love. Share God's love with the shepherds you meet on the hillside. Let the communion of the Holy Spirit fill your heart with glad tidings like the angels and the Prince of Peace born again tonight. May he live in your heart to comfort and challenge you as you seek to live as one of his disciples. Amen and Merry Christmas. Please wait for the lights to come on before you seek to move out. Thank you.